Broadcasting from the Business Radio X studios, here is your R3 Continuum playbook. Brought to you by Workplace MVP sponsor, R3 Continuum, a global leader in workplace behavioral health, crisis, and security solutions. Hi there, my name is Shane McNally, Marketing Specialist for R3 Continuum. On this episode of the R3 Continuum Playbook, we're featuring a segment from a recent webinar that was done with R3 Continuum's Associate Medical Director, Dr. Tyler Arvig. This webinar was titled, Imposter Syndrome, How to Understand, Acknowledge, and Overcome It. In this webinar, Dr. Arvig took a deeper dive into something that most of us have likely experienced at some point, but maybe didn't even realize what it was, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is defined as an internal experience of believing that you are not as competent as others perceive you to be. While it's perfectly normal to feel this way, it can impact your mental well-being, job performance, and your ability to thrive within your career if it's left unaddressed. In this segment, Dr. Arvig provides expert advice into what you can do if you find yourself struggling with imposter syndrome. What do you do if you are identifying with some of these traits? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, realize that that's normal. Um, humans have you know, this e- the wonderful ability to, to kind of, we have frontal lobes and we can process things more intellectually and, and, and dig into things. But sometimes that can also have a downside, which is we overanalyze things. We worry too much about things. So if you're noticing these things in yourself, first of all, realize that it's normal. Um, and it, it's not pathological. We aren't talking about pathology or you're not sick. This isn't an illness. It's just, you know, your way of, of seeing yourself and, and seeing other people. So, um, these are just some tips. Um, they, they might work for you they might not, but really just kind of think about these things as we talk about them. Um, the first thing you can do is, you know, show your feelings, be transparent. Um, if I'm having doubt in, in myself and in, in what I've, you know, what I'm feeling or my role or whatever, the first thing I can do is just, you know, talk to someone about that. Um, you know, uh, share, you know, I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling like I'm not maybe really part of this group or I'm not good enough. Um, there's something wrong with that. And everyone has those thoughts, but some people are reluctant to share them, but sharing those feelings can go a long way towards undoing the um, what you might have built up in your mind about some of these things. Uh, the second thing is, you know, assess your abilities. So with imposter syndrome, what we're talking about is I'm, I don't feel like I'm really good at doing what I'm doing. Um, if the CEO, you know, the, the CEO, information out there is interesting because you get these people that are heads of, you know, giant multi-billion dollar corporations and they're like, I'm not good enough to do this. Like, I'm not really that good. I'm like, well, you must be because you got promoted that level and that doesn't happen by accident. Um, but if we think of this as doubting our abilities, the, the second thing we can do is really assess our abilities. Okay. Objectively, how did I do with that? Oh, actually, maybe I did pretty darn well with it. So maybe some of my some of my doubt, and my abilities is misplaced. Um, again, when it comes to confronting what we think of as faulty beliefs or beliefs that maybe don't have a basis in fact, the way you do that is by assessing facts and then going, okay, here's what I believe. Here's what I actually did. Where do they match up and where don't they match up? Um, the third point here is to start small, which is, you know, don't try and do everything all at once. You know, start with one thing. If I'm, you know, I have, uh, let's say I get through this presentation and I'm like, oh, this presentation just didn't go well. I, I feel like I didn't know the topic and I was kind of fooling everyone and I didn't really say anything that was that intelligent. You know, I could do a bunch of different things. I could go do a, a ton more research on the internet and compare it to the slides I have and then talk to my boss and talk to this person, talk to that person. Or maybe I just call Shane and be like, hey, Shane, how did that go? Like, did it go okay? Did it seem, you know, start small. 
You know, you don't always need this big, giant reaffirmation, but just little affirmations chip away at it over time. And that can sometimes help to to get you out of that mindset. Um, The fourth thing is question your thoughts. And, you, you know, if you've ever been involved in therapy or mental health treatment of any kind, one of the things we often do is, you know, when people have thoughts and those thoughts may or may not be based in fact, but the first thing we do is, you know, if someone says, I, you know, I think that uh, this person doesn't like me. Okay, well, you know, look at that objectively, that thought, question it. Do I have any basis for that thought? You know, what, what information confirms that thought? What information disconfirms that thought? But question it. A thought is not a fact. A thought is thought, right? So start questioning your thoughts, especially those thoughts that lead to self-doubt or negativity. Which, by the way, doesn't mean you're not going to do anything that's wrong or that things might not happen that are negative. Because you will, and they do. But one of the things we often do is, you know, one negative thing can happen, 99 positive things can happen, and what we walk away with is the one negative thing. We don't walk away with all the other stuff that went really well. So questioning your thoughts is one way of balancing out your mindset when it comes to some of these things. Uh, limiting social media is is a big one, particularly when it comes to, well, I was going to say particularly when it comes to social, but I would say actually in relation to everything. Um, I joke with my wife that, you know, no one posts on social media. Yep, I got drunk last night. My marriage is falling apart. And. And, um, and, you know, and this, and I'm losing my house. No one posts the bad stuff on social media. What you see is, you know, happy people and smiling people and people on vacation, and people getting promotions and people doing this and people doing that. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But what that can lead to is, is, you know, when I look at my life, I'm not happy with a lot of things. And I look externally at social media and everyone's happy about things. And then you start to feel like you're less than other people or they have this stuff together and you don't. Well, that's not the case. It's just, again, people post happy things. They don't post negative things sometimes. Uh, but th- it leads to a comparison that's not an accurate comparison. You know, if we did a true apples to apples comparison, we're probably all kind of in the same boat. We have some stuff that's good. We have some stuff that's bad. And most, most of the time we're somewhere in the middle. Um, but consuming constant social media is is one way to um, to really get yourself mentally in the wrong headspace when it comes to you know these comparisons with others and comparing your own abilities. Um, don't let it stop you. This might seem kind of obvious, but you know t- Tom Hanks said every. Every, uh, you know, the first week of every movie, he has, he has doubts and he thinks he's going to get fired. He doesn't quit the movie in that first week, right? He keeps working. So um, as with most things in our lives that are negative or negative thoughts, pushing through, you know, most of the time what we're going to find is, is that what we think um, doesn't come to fruition. Uh, and we only, we only can figure that out if we keep pushing through. If we stop every time we hit a barrier, we're never going to move beyond that barrier. Most things we worry about never happen, uh, which as a quick aside for any trivia buffs, um, Tom Petty said the best line here we wrote in a song is, is most things I worry about never happen anyway. Um, it's just we worry about things. That's what we do. Most of the time, those things never happen. So if we let it stop us, then we've created a problem for ourselves in our lives. If those CEOs and those sports stars and all those other people stopped in their tracks because they felt, "Ah, I'm really a phony, I'm not going to make it, they wouldn't make it. So don't do that. And then I already talked in social media really about comparing yourselves to others, but there's really not much value in it. Um, So try not to do that as well. What I really find interesting about imposter syndrome is that it's something that I think most people could probably relate to at some point, both in the work environment and in personal lives as well. 
Imposter syndrome can have a negative impact on mental well-being of employees if left unaddressed. R3 Continuum can help. Connect with us and learn about our services at r3c.com or email us directly at info at r3c.com.